Welcome to the first of two videos showing you how to use the Core Knowledge Language Arts Skills Curriculum strand for kindergarten through third grade. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the various materials you'll be using and show you how to use the introduction section of the teacher's guide, which will provide you the important information you'll need to teach the unit to your student. In the second video, I'll show you how to use the step-by-step -step lesson plans you'll be using each day as you work with your student. Now first, it's very important to download the curriculum from the Core Knowledge website. You can download the Teacher's Guide, Workbook, and Student Reader, along with ancillary materials for each unit for kindergarten through third grade for free from the Core Knowledge Foundation. Core Knowledge also has curriculum available for history and geography, as well as science through eighth grade. This is a very high quality and engaging curriculum that is commonly used by private schools and charter schools, and it's also increasingly popular with homeschoolers because it's both high quality and free. Now on my website, you will find free support materials, including a daily schedule and checklist so you can get set up and use this free curriculum from Core Knowledge. My goal is to help you provide your own children with a high quality, affordable education at home. Now, a quick note, if you are looking for the fourth through eighth grade language arts curriculum, I do have a separate set of videos for those, both on my website and my YouTube channel. All right, before we begin, I wanna be sure you understand how language arts is covered in the core knowledge curriculum. Language arts as a school subject typically consists of a wide variety of topics, including reading and spelling instruction, penmanship, grammar, language mechanics, composition, reading comprehension, literature, vocabulary, things like that. For kindergarten through third grade, Core Knowledge splits these topics into two separate curriculum strands. The listening and learning curriculum strand covers mainly reading comprehension, literature, literary terms and concepts and vocabulary. The skills curriculum strand covers reading and spelling instruction, penmanship, grammar, language mechanics, and composition. Now, very important, you will need both of these curriculum strands for a full language arts curriculum. So this isn't a situation where you pick one, you do in fact need both. Otherwise your student will be missing out on learning a significant set of important skills. Now, there is one exception to this rule. If you're an experienced homeschooling parent and you already have a high quality phonics curriculum, uh, something like Logic of English, All About Reading and Spelling, Ordinary Parents Guide to Teaching Reading, something like that, you and you also have both grammar and penmanship covered, you may be just looking for that literature and vocabulary component. And in that case, you'll wanna use the listening and learning strand and you can skip the skill strand I'm talking about in this video. But a quick note, I would encourage you to add the core knowledge language arts skill strand starting in second or third grade when you've completed your other phonics, grammar, and penmanship curriculums. Now, I do have videos available for the listening and learning strand curriculum, and you can check those out on either my website or my YouTube channel. All right, for this video, though, we're going to be focused on the language arts skills strand curriculum materials, and specifically, I'll be showing you how to use the teacher's guide and introducing you to the supporting materials. We're gonna be looking at the teacher's guide for the first unit, or excuse me, first grade, unit three. However, all the core knowledge language arts skills teacher's guides for kindergarten through third grade are laid out essentially in the same way. So the information in this video is still going to apply even if you're using a different unit or a different grade level. All right, let's get started learning more about the materials you'll be using to teach your student. The first step to using the Core Knowledge Language Arts Skills Curriculum is to download the curriculum files from the Core Knowledge website. Now, I recommend you check out my video on how to download and organize the curriculum files, but for this video, I'm going to start by explaining the two groups of files you're going to need to download. The first set of files you'll be downloading will be the unit curriculum files. Now, there will be any somewhere between six and 11 units per grade level, and you'll be downloading one folder of files for each unit. Okay, this might sound a little complicated, but I'd recommend just watching my downloading video where I walk you through this step by step. For each unit, you will receive three core files, the teacher's guide, the student reader, and the workbook. Now each of these unit folders will also contain two other files. The first is the big book, and while that sounds very exciting, uh, it's only needed for a few units in kindergarten. And if you're downloading, if you've downloaded the free organization unit prep documents from my website, I have clear notes laying that out for you. 
once your student starts using the student reader, they won't need the big book file. It's just a duplicate of the student reader. It's laid out differently though, um, because it's meant for a classroom teacher to hold up and show to a classroom of students and kind of uh, model fluent reading. But since you're only teaching one student, you can just go ahead and use the student reader once those are available. All right, you'll also see an assessment and remediation guide. This is an optional resource, but it can be helpful if your student is missing some of the skills they typically would have learned in previous grade levels. In most cases, you won't need this resource, and for this video and for the daily schedule you can download from my website, that assessment and remediation guide isn't used. All right, next, you're going to be downloading a folder of ancillary materials. There will be one set of these ancillary material files that will be used for the whole year for that specific grade. Okay, so there'll be like one set of files for all of second grade, for example. Now it will depend on which of the grades between kindergarten and third you're using, but generally speaking, those ancillary materials will be things like consonant and vowel flip books, co-charts, large and small letter cards, blending cards, and more, more like you see on this list on the, on the right, uh, right hand side of the screen. Now think of these items like flashcards you, that you might use to teach something like math. You'll be pulling them out often to use them as part of the lessons. Now for the most part, you'll be able to use these materials simply by opening each PDF file on a tablet or laptop. For example, if you're working through a lesson and the teacher's guide tells you you need to show your student the letter H letter card, you would just open that file, scroll to the page with the letter H, and show the student the screen. I promise though that'll be much more clear um, in the next video when I walk you through exactly how to give a lesson. All right, now you can also print any of these files you're downloading from Core Knowledge, um, but it's not required for anything except the workbook that they're gonna need to write in. Now, if you download that free organization guide from my website, I do have this broken out further with exactly which materials are included in which unit and which materials are potentially worth considering printing versus just using the PDF file. So now that you have an idea of these two sets of files you'll need, let's take a closer look and we'll start with the core materials for the language arts skills curriculum. So for each grade level, there are, there are a set of units that you'll download from the Core Knowledge website. So for example, for first grade, there are seven units in the skills curriculum. When you download a unit from Core Knowledge, you'll be downloading a folder with three main files. So that's the teacher's guide, which is there on the left, um, and that's what we'll be primarily looking at in this video. You'll also have a student reader for the unit, and you can see samples um, from one of those readers here at the top. And then finally, a unit workbook, and there are samples from one of the workbooks down there at the bottom. Now, you'll be able to use both the teacher's manual and the student reader simply by opening those PDF files on a tablet or laptop. But like I mentioned a moment ago, the workbook you're going to need to print um, so your student can write on the pages. But don't worry, that notebook can, or that workbook can be printed in black and white and double-sided. Now, you'll be using the teacher's guide for every lesson you teach your student, and almost all lessons will use both the student reader and the workbook as well. Okay, so those are your core materials, and you can more or less count on using them every school day. As you work through this video in the part two video, you'll be seeing examples of these as I show you how you'll be working through a lesson with your student. Next, let's take a look at some of those ancillary materials you'll have downloaded in that single folder from the Core Knowledge website. Now there's one set of these ancillary materials per grade level and they're used throughout the entire school year. These are supplemental resources. They're like math flashcards. You're gonna pull out one or two of these files for each lesson generally. Now every grade level won't necessarily have all of these resources. If you're using kindergarten or first grade materials, for example, there isn't a fluency packet. Um, only kindergarten has a sound poster. But don't worry, you'll be downloading one folder of these components from the Core Knowledge website and it'll have everything you need for that grade level. Now I've put up some pictures here to give you some idea of what these resources look like. So on the far left is a sound card from the kindergarten materials. In the middle on top is the consonant flip book. The example is showing the different letter sounds we use in English for the cuss sound. Right below that is the vowel flip book. And this page is showing some of the vowel letter teams. Um, at the bottom in the center is an example of the individual code chart, which is basically flashcards for letters. And, this capital L is an example. And then finally on the right, I put some examples of the spelling cards. Now I realize there seems to be a lot of files here, but two really important things. First, 
In the second video, when I walk you through how to give your student a lesson, you'll see right away that the teacher's guide tells you right on the first page of the lesson what resources you'll need for that lesson. And the teacher's guide always tells you step by step what to do to work through the lesson. So if you need to show your student the capital L page from the consonant flipbook, the teacher's guide is going to let you know that even before you start the lesson. And it will tell you during the lesson exactly when you need to do that. There's no guesswork here. Okay, you're never going to be left wondering what resources you need or what you need to do with them. Second, the key to this is just to know where the files are at each school day. Now, if you're only accessing these resources on your tablet or laptop, then look right there, you're organized, right? All the files are in a folder on your laptop or tablet. If you decide you wanna print some of these files though, I just recommend keeping them in a box or container near where you do school each day. Okay, so even though this might seem like a lot of moving pieces, as long as you know where they are and you keep them nearby, you'll know exactly which page or which file you need and when thanks to those detailed instructions in the teacher's guide. Now that you have a feel for the different materials you'll be using to teach your student, let's move on to a deep dive into the introduction section of the teacher's guide. Knowing what's in the different parts of the introduction will not only help you more confidently teach your student, you'll also know which portions are important to read through before you start each unit during the school year. Now for this video, I'm going to be showing you the first grade unit three skills teacher's guide. But remember all the teacher's guides for kindergarten through third grade are essentially laid out in the same way. So this information can be used even if you're using a different grade level of the program. All right, so let's start by looking at this table of contents. Each teacher's guide for each unit has four main parts you'll need to teach the unit. There's the introduction and then the step-by-step -step lesson plans, including review lesson days, a pausing point, and the workbook answer key is always in the back of the teacher's guide for that unit. Now, before we launch into the introduction section, a quick note. At the very beginning of every unit, right after the table of contents, you're going to find a number of pages of alignment charts. I'm not gonna show these to you because you do not need them. These are there for classroom teachers who are required to align their lesson plans with state standards. And as homeschoolers, this isn't typically something we need to do. Now, if you're in a position where you are homeschooling a child or several children with the intention of them returning to public school, rest assured that this curriculum does meet those state standards as a, at a minimum. So if you simply follow the teacher's guides and work through the lessons, your students will remain on track for the state standards. You don't need to worry about that pile of overwhelming charts in the beginning of the teacher's manual to explain exactly how that happens. Now, like I said, those state standards are a minimum. This is actually a much higher quality curriculum than what most public schools use. So this rises far and above those standards in terms of the quality of instruction. Also, you won't generally need the teacher resources in the back of the teacher's guide. Those are just tracking documents to help a classroom teacher understand the progress of 30 individual students. You only probably have one student, maybe two. A Little bit easier to keep track of where they're at. All right, so let's take a look at that first part of the introduction section of the teacher's guide. Right here at the beginning of the unit is an overview chart of how the unit will flow. It is possible to use this chart to understand what you'll generally be working on with your student each school day. Now, don't worry about which exact day of the school year each of these lessons will happen. If you download that free daily schedule I have on my website, you'll have a day-to-day -day schedule laid out for you. So you'll know exactly which unit and which lesson you'll be working on on any given day or week of the school year. You'll also see on this chart that each lesson scheduled for each day incorporates several different tasks and the types of tasks rotate. In kindergarten and first grade, these tasks are more heavily weighted to establishing a base of reading skills. In second and third grade, when reading skills are more established, you'll see more heavy weighting towards things like spelling and grammar and composition activities. This is a really well set up curriculum. Key skills are visited almost every day. Secondary skills are rotated throughout the week. Teaching new material, reviewing what's been learned in assessments are also all built into the daily lessons. You're not gonna have to worry about keeping track of those different things. Now at the end of each unit, there's also a pausing point with a number of options for activities to reinforce what was learned. And you can pick and choose from those tasks based on whether the previous assessment activities identified any specific concepts that need review. Okay, 
So that sounds like a lot, but don't worry. I'm just kind of giving you an overview here. In the next video, I'm gonna walk you through an example lesson as well as the pausing point. You'll start to understand better how this works. All right, so moving on to the next page in this introduction section, you'll see the schedule chart continues here. And then at the bottom, you'll see the first section giving an overview of what new information is taught in this unit. So for example, this section is letting us know that there are five new vowel sounds taught in this unit, specifically those for u, u, a, oi, and a. If you're wondering how I just rattled all those off, don't worry, you too will soon be able to do this. It's too bad it's not a cooler party trick because I'm getting really good at it. <laughs> so the next page though lays out some more things that will be learned, including some similar sounding vowel pairs that may cause confusion, similar spellings using vowel pairs, things like that. Now, just a moment here. If you have no idea what a vowel pair is and you don't know what these letter sounds are or any of these things I'm talking about, don't worry. The lessons are going to guide you through this material. You don't have to know these concepts in advance. It's okay. All right, so this section of the teacher's guide, each time you start a new unit, you're going to wanna read this section. It's pretty important. You'll wanna be familiar up front before you start teaching the unit which, with these concepts that are gonna be introduced. All right, this very important section continues on the next few pages. So let's look at these next few pages. You'll be seeing more information on the different resources that'll be used in this unit, some more concepts that'll be covered and information about the reader for the unit. So for example, in this unit, you'll be using the flip books and the code chart that were included in the ancillary components folder you downloaded. You'll also be helping your student learn to work with tricky words and tricky spellings. There's information in this section on the grammar and writing concepts that will be taught. And the topic of the reader for this unit is fables. And there's some information about what your student will learn exploring this genre of literature. All right, so in the last two pages of the introduction section, you will find more information about what is taught in this unit. And specifically in this section, you'll see information on assessment opportunities that are built into the lessons. Um, also a list of additional materials you may wanna have on hand. Um, in this case, for this unit, that list says white and yellow index cards, chart paper, and a thin tipped green marker. You'll also see information about the pausing point for the unit and the types of activities available. Okay, so a couple quick notes here. First, if you've downloaded the free organization and prep documents from my website, you'll have access to a grade level supply list. So in this case, you'd have a first grade supply list, as well as notes about supplies that are more unique and only required for some units. So those white and yellow index cards, chart paper, you can also use like a whiteboard or chalkboard if you have one, um, and that thin tipped green marker, those are all examples of supplies that actually show up in multiple first grade skills units. So I have them listed on the first grade um, list of common materials. So if you download that from my website, you'll be able to gather all those school supplies in advance. All right, so that concludes the introduction section. And before you move on to the second video to learn about the lesson plans, I want to first mention a few things. First, all language arts skills units teachers guides for kindergarten through third grade are, are laid out in basically the same way. So this video may seem like a lot of information, but the good news is that it will put you in a better position to navigate any of those language arts skills curriculum teachers guides. Second, I would encourage you to take time when you start a new unit to make that habit of reviewing the overview schedule and reading carefully through the information on what is covered in the unit. With a few minutes spent on those tasks, you'll be in a better position to teach the unit with confidence. Please be sure to download the organization and prep documents from my website. They're all free resources. I've done this organization and scheduling work for you. I would like to make your life easier. The daily schedule will tell you which day, oh, which week and day of the school year will cover each lesson. And the organization guide will serve as a checklist to help you get ready to teach your student and also how to get ready to start in any new unit. Okay, so now that you understand the introduction section of the teacher's guide, be sure to move on to video number two. I'm going to take you on a detailed tour of an example lesson, as well as show you how the pausing point in each unit works. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you shortly in video number two.